So we're going to start. We've got about a half an hour. I, got a, I need a couple hours to expound on this, but we'll go with what we have here. Romans, and it's verse 1, chapter 6, verse 1. Now, Paul has just got finishing explaining about grace, how we're justified through faith, not of works. The Bible says we're saved by grace. That's God's grace, unmerited favor. We don't do anything to favor it. But the price was paid. Christ died in our place. We should have died because of Adam's sin and our sin. But instead, Christ volunteered his life and died for us that we might have eternal life and have all of our sins forgiven. It's very simple. It's not complicated. And we accept it all by faith. God has given to every man a measure of faith to believe his word. So you have that measure of faith. Now, you know, some folks say, well, I just can't believe how a loving God can send anybody to hell. He doesn't send anybody to hell. Now listen to this. The Bible says, are you ignorant of his love? Are you ignorant of his graciousness? Are you ignorant of his goodness? It is God's will that no man perish, but that all should come to repentance. So here's what God has done through Christ. He's offered everybody in the world salvation. But when people are ignorant, because they're ignorant and they don't know about his grace and his mercy and what Christ did for them at Calvary, that's where we come in as a church to spread the gospel. Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. In the gospel, it shows us a righteousness, and that righteousness comes from God through Christ to us. And now when we accept Christ, we become righteous in the sight of God, and therefore we could go into the very presence of God who is righteous and talk with him, share with him, and spend time at the throne telling the Lord whatever we need to, that might be on our heart. For he has an ear and he listens to us. And besides that, we have Jesus Christ seated at the right hand side of the Father, interceding for us, and he understands everything about us. So just remember, salvation is available for everybody. But the thing is, people say, well, I just cannot believe that God would send somebody to hell. No, you send yourself to hell. No, the person sends themselves to hell by not accepting God's grace and goodness and pardon. He's made a way for everybody to be saved. He's made a way where we all can come into his family and he can become our heavenly father through what Christ did on the cross. Very simple, not complicated. Get your mind off of your, quit being sin conscious and begin to get grace conscious. Begin to get God conscious. Begin to get conscious of what God has done for us. Somebody shout. I don't care. Woo! See, we, we all bent over about, you know, our little ugliness. Well, listen, let me tell you something. While we were yeah, ugly, Christ died for us. Now, run that through your computer. He loved us so much. Hmm. How many loves their children in here? Okay. How many don't love their children? Not in saying love their ways. Uh, you know. <laughs> would you give your life for your child? How many would? Raise your hands. Well, if you that 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 you know would give your life because you love them, how much more did God do for us? He loves us. See, when you love somebody, guess what? You love them unconditionally, not based on how good looking they are. Now, we won't argue with that with me. Now, well, maybe with you. When you love somebody, you love them regardless of what they do or don't do. Come on now. Somebody shout at me to do something. 
Honey, you're my wife. We've been married for 62 years. Have I been perfect all those years? And he opened not his mouth. Everybody said, that's wisdom. <laughs> but she, if I did, she still loved me. Now she'll clap on that. So you know if you got real love because you love the brethren. Oh, come on, don't shout me down now. I know that you are a Christian by the apples you bear. <laughs> How many know you know an apple tree by the apples? Yes. They shall know us by our love. Yes. Now, Paul addresses the issue about God's love, justification, and everything, and he comes along. And then he comes along in Romans 6, and it says, first verse, what shall we say to all this? All this what? All this that God has done for us. All of this, him justifying us and put us into the family of God, took us out of the kingdom of darkness and put, him, put us into the kingdom of the Son of God. All of this that God has done for us, what shall we say to all this? I'll give you a word. Hallelujah! <laughs> Come on, go ahead. Hallelujah! Amen. Are we, are we to remain in sin? in order that God's grace, favor, and mercy may multiply and overflow. Now listen, there's a difference being in sin than sin being in us. That's it. Hmm. I'm say that again. There's a difference of living in sin 24-7 and maybe having some sin or some things in us that's not really right and we would say they were sin. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? See, when you live in sin, you practice that sin 24-7. So Paul is not saying you can't sin, but if you do sin, don't say you haven't sinned. Just confess that you have sinned and remember God is just and faithful to beat you over the head every time. Huh? No. To forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. I remember my precious wife. We had three daughters. She would, man, she would fix them all up, clean them, take the bath and powder them and Man, put all that pretty dresses on them and bow in their hair and man, all that. And then they go outside. Now, don't you get dirty. You might as well talk to the wall. Because they went out, they got dirty. But you know, they were still her daughter. And they come back in. Oh my goodness, they got dirty. So she's so gracious. She cleaned them all up again. And you know, sometimes you'll mess up. I'm talking to the young folks. Now, you older folks in Christians never mess up. I understand that. <laughs> well, you know, but you have to do the same thing. God's made provisions. And that provision is if you confess that sin, you ain't no need to run from God. He sees everything anyway. In fact, put uh, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 13 up there, just in case, you know, a lot of times when I was a boy, I didn't want mama to see what I was doing. Basically, when I was behind the barn smoking the, 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 the rabbit tobacco. How many of you here? You ain't never smoked rabbit tobacco? Man, you don't know what good smoke it is yet. You wrap it with a newspaper, you know, and you smoke that rabbit tobacco. Yeah, I can tell you what some of you are laughing, you've done it, uh-huh. Look at that. And not a creature exists that is, con that is concealed from his sight, from God's sight. Every, every one of them. He sees what you're thinking right now. He knows what you're thinking right now. He knows what you're going to say before you say it. And not a creature exists that is concealed from his sight. But all things are open, exposed, naked, and defenseless to the eyes of him with whom we have to do. 
So ain't no need to try to hide. Because you could, but he still sees you. Well, I'll get behind the barn. Remember how you used to get to the barn and smoke them cigarettes? He saw you. Yeah, mama didn't. But when I came up to the house, she'd say, uh, <clears throat> Bob, I said, yeah, mom. Let me smell your breath. <laughs> You've been smoking, haven't you? Oh, no, I ain't been smoking. Lie? Now, come on now. Huh? Anybody out there besides me? There's one honest, two honest. Do I see any honest folk over here? Another honest, another one. Another. Look at that. But see, God loves you. But here's what Paul is saying. All right, let's go back to uh, Romans chapter 6. All right, this will be new for some folks, but listen to it. Verse 2. Certainly not. How can we who died to sin live in it any longer? So everybody, first thing you do in your mind, I died to sin. Even though sin sometimes is operating and, and you're messing up, but you died to it. See, that's what you got to get in your mind. How many of you know we're habit creatures? I remember we had uh, my, my youngest daughter, uh, Tammy and, and Steve, they, they had these dogs big dogs like this, uh, lab dogs. So they want us to take care of one of their lab dogs while they went on vacation. And I said, yeah. So for a whole week, we took care of this lab dog. <coughs> but you come into our house, there's a door there, and uh, the lab dog was named Cal. He was from California. One of them California dogs. I said, now, Cal, you listen to me now. You stay right here and don't go around the house and spread all your, you know, what, because Susan don't like that. That's right. No in the house. <laughs> don't know what you do in California. But. And he said, okay. <laughs> so Cal would stay right there. So I come in the door every day. I come in. And I step over Cal. A whole week, I, I learned to step over Cal. Anyway, uh, Steve and Tammy comes and takes Cal away. But I come in the same door and I'm stepping over Cal. But Cal ain't there. I picked up that habit and I operate mechanically, just stepping over something that ain't there. And sometimes we confess sins that ain't there no more. Because God's already taken care of them. And, and it's not that we're so horribly bad all the time, but see, we're habit creatures. And this is why you can get addicted to cigarettes or alcohol or uh, uh, pornography. Oh, how many men I've had to deal with that got just, just pornography, just, well, we won't go into that. But it's, you, you get a habit of doing those things. You know, I used to have a, a habit of picking my nose at the table. <laughs> Anybody had that happen? No. Don't run. My mother didn't like that. But it took about three spankings <laughs> and dad to, uh, to beat me up a couple times when I didn't pick my nose anymore. <laughs> Come on, church. And sometimes God has to, you know, he loves us so much, he'll discipline his, us as his children. No, I don't care how big you look, how pretty you look, how much money you got, you his child. And if you ain't walking straight, he's going he's gonna to not beat you up, but he's going to punish you. Because why? He loves you. Thank God. Anybody in here has ever had their, their parents spank them? How many people have had this? Let's see your hands. How many uh, parents in here has been spanked by your uh, uh, daddy and mama? Did I? Huh? Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Aren't you glad? You know they should have spanked you more, shouldn't they? 
<laughs> My mama used to say, now, Bob, you go out there and you, you get a, a stick. I'm going to spank you. So I go out there and I get a little thin stick. I mean, you could hardly see it. You know, it's a little twig. I bring it in. Here, mama, here it is. Son, you go out and get a bigger one than that. So I go out and get a little bit bigger one. She spanked me on the legs. That's how I learned to do the jitterbug. Come on, come on, huh? huh? I mean, I learned that before it even came on the market. <laughs> but I could step high, man. I, I tell you, I learned it. All right, church, behave yourself out there. Now, what I want you to see here, now here's what Paul is saying. Now, look at, look at the scripture. Certainly, now how can we who died to sin live in it any longer? You say, I don't remember dying to sin. That's why I'm here to tell you. Now, here's the beautiful thing about it. And Paul brings all this up in that verse, that chapter. And I want all the young people that are the three people that's being water baptized today. Realize that when Christ died on the cross. You died. And you accept that by faith. And the Holy Spirit has the responsibility to work that sin principle out of the flesh and put the desire of God's will in there. So it's a removing out, but first you've got to realize it's already been done at Calvary. Already done, finished. Christ did it for us. Because how many know you can't kill yourself? Well, I'm going to kill myself. So I got a hammer. A hammer, that nail to the cross. Nail my two feet to the cross. Well, gosh, I got this hand to get into trouble with. <laughs> so God kills us. We died with Christ. See, I died with Christ. Died with Christ. All right. Now, this is a process. You're saved, you're justified, you're a child of God, your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, but now God is doing a sanctifying work in you, working in you, that song that we sang up there. He's working in us, making us willing to do His good pleasure. And unless, he work, unless you allow Him to work in you to do His good pleasure, you will not do His good pleasure. You will do, and I will do, our good pleasure. Yeah. Hello, are you out there, church? Yeah. See? So we come to the realization how gracious God is. He did it for us and we come into it as we put our faith in him to do it. Now let's read real quick. I got to move the time element. I only have five hours to preach this and I'm going to try to get it within that time limit. All right, now listen to this. Now put the next verse up there. Verse three, are you ignorant of the fact? Now a fact is a fact. That all of us at the shield, every Christian person, all humanity, who have been baptized into Christ, Jesus were, Jesus were baptized into his death. Now, the water does not save us. The water is a symbolic symbol of what has already happened in us. Christ did it for us. When Christ was put on the cross, he was crucified and we were crucified. When Christ was removed from the cross, we were was removed with him and he was buried and we were buried with him. That is our old Adam, okay? The old creation. And when Christ was raised from the dead, we were raised with him to walk in the newness of life. And you, and you accept that by faith. And when it becomes a reality to you, you begin to, oh, hallelujah. You get fanatic. You get happy. Somebody just gave me $2 billion. How many would jump a little bit if I gave you $200 million? Let's see. Huh? Let's see. What would you do? What would you do? Son, what would you do if I give you a million? Huh? Huh? Get up, son. I think you 
<laughs> oh, I didn't bring a million with me, but uh, give us a little demonstration. Well, you know, let's see. Uh, one, two, three, four. Whoop, 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 whoop. Ho, 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 ho. Hallelujah. So you get happy in the thing. Now listen to me. Listen to me now. Some of you just hearing me, but when the Lord makes it alive to you, you see it. You know it. There's no doubt. Woo! I'm free and last from me. See, that's why you keep reading the Bible and the Holy Spirit. You trust him to illuminate your mind and your heart and give you the understanding of that. And it becomes alive inside of you and it becomes a reality. And so you'll find yourself sinning less and less and less. But in the meantime, you have 1 John 1, 9. Until God can work and give you the revelation that sin, you don't have to live in sin. Remember I said there's a difference in living in sin than sinning. You can sin anytime you want to. No, I'll show you something. I'll sin. I'll come up here and slap this guy. Watch it. Well, no, he might hit me back. <laughs> you reap what you sow. <laughs> so I ain't going to sow that no more. Now listen, it's not complicated but when you first start out trying to break some of your habits, stepping over something that ain't there, and that's why the rest of the church will have to just love you where you're at until you can come to that place that the, the light turns on. All right, let's move real fast here. Only got five hours to go. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Look at verse four. Here we go. We were buried. Who's we? Raise your hand. We, 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 we were buried therefore with him. With who? Who's him? Christ. By the baptism into death. That's a spiritual operation of the Holy Spirit. Then we would go down in that water. The only thing that we're showing is this has already happened to us. And when you see me go down in that water. Now listen, I will not hold you no more than two hours. Well, really, I haven't lost anybody yet, so you can relax. But when you go down in that water, you're demonstrating to all of us that your old life, the old Bob Tilton, the old you, died with Christ, down in the water, buried with Christ, and you come out of that water to walk in the newness of life by the power of the Holy Spirit. Not in your own effort. All right, you'll learn that along the way. That's why we want you to come to Sunday school, come to church, where we can teach you how. Okay, now look at what it says. So that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, so we too might habitly live and behave in the newness of life. So after a while, you start doing it the right way, the right way the right way. It becomes a habit. You get better and better. Uh, Spencer, would you go back and get my, da my dart thing there? I think I'll start preaching here. I'll tell you one thing. This is getting good in here. Bam. Now, Spencer's going to stand right there. Let me have this. Put that in front of you, son. Oh, you're trying to make it hard on me, huh? I was just trying to make sure you did. Now, <laughs> you know I never miss. Now, only that one time that it went between your nose. All right. Now, as I continue to practice this, how many know I'll get better and better and better? Huh? Okay. i tell you what we'll do. Because I don't want nobody to have a heart attack. Just put that in the chair and you can sit over there. Not that I would ever miss. But when you first start out, and then Brother Bob said, well, praise God, I'm dead unto sin. That first old temptation that you've been, that's gone is dead, but you're still stepping over. You're still drinking the booze. You're still smoking cigarettes, pot, whatever it is. So, why are you trying? You say, I'm dead indeed under sin. <laughs> I missed it. Oh, oh, God's going to strike me dead. No, 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 no. What scripture would I use? 
Come on, church. Let's go first. Let's say everybody, first John 1 9. Put it on the board. I think some folks ain't seen it yet. And I've been preaching for 50 some years. All right, here we go. First John 1 9. I missed it. I boo booed. If we freely admit that we have sin, which you plainly see that I have, I miss. See, sin is missing the target, the center of the target. If I confess that sin, he is, God is faithful and just, true to his own nature and promises, and will forgive our sins, dismiss our lawlessness, and continuously cleanse us from all unrighteousness, everything not in conformity to his will, in purpose, thought, and action. Now, if you have lived as long as I have, you will know this. If it wasn't for the grace of God, I'm a goner. See, some people don't know a whole lot about grace because they never showed grace. They thought they never needed grace. But you come to a point, man, do I need grace upon grace and more grace. Okay? Now, here's the thing about it. Turn to James chapter uh, 4, verse 6. James 4, verse 6. But he gives us more and more grace, power of the Holy Spirit, to meet this evil tendency and all others fully. You get that grace from God, his grace, his grace. Thank you, uh, David. Now, now that's an important scripture. You need to write that down and memorize it. That is why he says, God sets himself against the proud but haughty, but always gives grace continuously to the lowly and those who are humble enough to receive it. So there's a condition to God's grace now that you're a child of God. Now I want you to listen to this. If you don't listen to this, if you don't see this, you'll stay just like you are and you'll die trying and failing, trying and failing, trying and failing, trying and failing. You've got to learn how many's got money in the bank? One, two, get their, get their name, would you? I mean, their picture. <laughs> how many knows how to draw your money out of your bank? And if you need $100, you can know it's in there. But if you don't know how to draw it out, <laughs> what good is it? Unless you give it to me, of course. I'm, how many do you understand what I'm talking about? See, there's grace in the bank for everybody. But if you don't know how to draw it out. How many got it? Raise your hand. You got to know how. You draw it out by faith. You speak it. The word of God. Life and death is in the power of tongue. Father, I need grace to overcome this thing that, 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 that I continuously are stepping over. But Lord, it's not even there. But I'm a habit and I just keep falling into that, that, that same old sin, that same old thing. Because see, what happens is your conscience bothers you now. Because see, you don't understand. There's, there's a price when you sin. And we don't understand that when we forgive others, we deliver ourselves. Are you, are you out there, church? This is why we tell people, do not gossip, do not slander. What you sow, you're going to reap. And we don't understand that, but I'm a Christian. It doesn't make no difference. You just keep putting your head in the lion's mouth. You're going to lose your head. Somebody said, that's good preaching, Bob. How many love me? Not much, but you're working at it, right? See, we can be our, own, our worst enemy. Did you see what they did? No, but I see what you're doing, and you're bringing death to yourself by gossiping about that neighbor. Come on, church, don't shout me down. And I, got, I try to get people to see that, because you see, God sees it, and you're going to reap what you sow. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 and 8 and 9. So you've got to learn these principles and how to operate within the principles of God to be successful in life, to enjoy life, to be strong and courageous and overcome the world, the flesh and the devil by the very principles of God. And the Holy Spirit has been given to us to help us remember that. Now, so as I keep practicing, time's going by, as I keep practicing, I better do a lot of practicing, don't you think? But as I keep 
practicing. Hey, I hit it. First John 1 John 1.9, missed it. God's forgiven me, so I just keep missing it. First John 1 John 1.9. But Lord, I thank you that I'm dead indeed unto sin, but I'm alive unto God through Christ Jesus, my Lord. I know I was crucified with Christ. Thank you. You, you want to try, try your, see what you can do. Go ahead. <laughs> Let's see if he's grown any. <laughs> but just go ahead. Yeah, first John. <laughs> First John, yeah. See, he don't have to use 1 John 1, 9 as much as I do because he's been practicing. I'm dead indeed under sin, but I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive unto God through Christ Jesus my Lord. And somebody shout. Woo! Woo! Hallelujah. I wish I had more time, but I don't have the time. We want to get these people drowned. I mean, we want to get these people baptized. <laughs> And remember, when you go down in the, in the water, <clears throat> whatever habit you got, ever, it's gone. It's gone because it was done at Calvary. But you're showing the congregation now by this act in symbolic picture that your old man died. And when you come out of that water, a brand new creature. Listen to me. God don't give you or change your spirit. He gives you a brand new spirit. If any man be in Christ... He is a new creation. Think about that. But in our psychic, in our mind, our flesh has uh, developed taste for certain things. And, and many times we've, we, we've come, we've have come uh, it's become a, an addiction to us. And we have to learn how to break that addiction. So if you have any, come to Sunday school. We'll teach you what your part in that is. Amen. All right. We've got a song. Can you sing for us or whatever? And, 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 and let's go ahead, the guys, who's going to be water baptized? What, back over here? And we got one here. And where's the other one at? One, two. Yeah, one, two, three, four. It has no power to save. Even though Christ said baptize. But the gospel in a nutshell is death and burial and resurrection. When we believe in our heart that Christ did that for us, we are saved. Now, through water baptism, we are testifying to the world by this physical, in a sense, physical picture, what has happened that Christ did for us. And it's a beautiful picture when you see how we died with Christ. And when they go down in the water, that shows the death of Christ. And when they come up out of the water, now they're buried. The water is a symbolic symbol of the earth. Buried in the ground. But risen to walk in the newness of life. Catch this. By the Spirit of God. And so many people start walking by the power of the flesh. And they get all tangled up. And I have to untangle them a lot of times. So everything we do, we do, and you, that's something you'll learn. You'll just learn how to walk in the Spirit, and it's a learning process. Where's our brother right there? He's out there. Okay. All right, I'm going to go ahead. All right, brother, come on. Let's, Man, let's my phone, please. Now, before you go down in this grave, <laughs> relax, brother. <laughs> before you go down in this grave, just wave at everybody. <laughs> to tell them goodbye. <laughs> when you see me again, I'll be a new creature. <laughs> okay. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Yes. Have you confessed him as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Do you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead? Yes then the Bible says you're saved. Can't get no more saved. The water doesn't save you. You're saved by the grace of God through faith, not of works.
Thus any man should boast. We have nothing to boast about, but everything to praise him for. All right, you hold your nose as you go under. All right, that right here. Baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Well, receive, receive right now. Receive the power of God. Lord, just baptize him in the Holy Ghost. Let all the gifts manifest. Lord, we thank you now. Thank you, Jesus, for the victory that is his. A new beginning, a new day, and he's showing everybody. Don't talk about my past anymore because I ain't got no past. Brand new creation in Christ. And that's something he did for you. And you've received it by faith. In Jesus' name, I break all past curses. All curses of any idols of, from India or anything. All cords of anything, Lord, I've cut. All gone. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Lord. Raise your hands and receive now. Receive the glory. Yes. Now remember, God is your heavenly father. You are his son, adopted into his family. An heir of God and a co-heir with Jesus Christ. And wherever you go, he'll be with you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Give me a hug, partner. Love you. Love you. Amen. Hey! All right, we're going up this All right. All right. Everyone stand to your feet as we get dismissed. We would like to invite anyone who's a guest here today, if you would like to join us in the back, we have dinner usually right after the service. We just invite you to come join us and so we can fellowship. Oh, we have one more. I am so sorry. You can have a seat. Am I hungry? Just wave at them. Tell them goodbye. Hey, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> You've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes, sir, I have. Do you believe in your heart? No. He is your Lord and your Savior. Without a shadow okay. of a doubt. Very good. You believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead? Yes, sir. Then the Bible says you're saved. I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There's with Christ risen. Woo! Woo! Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be filled with all the gifts of God. Oh, shalala baba. Yes. On the rabba bakiki la baba. My son, do not fear, for I am with you. I will direct you and guide you. For I am your heavenly Father, and you will get to know me better and better as you spend time in my word, save the Lord. Father, I cut all cords of the past. Father, I cut all, all idols, all addiction. Go in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Father. He's been set free. Sin shall not have dominion over him no longer. He's free to walk in the Spirit. And your love. It's been shed in his heart by the Holy Ghost. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, for that victory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. As a new man, wave to your brothers and sisters. Hey, yes. Hallelujah! There we go. <laughs> Watch your step. Yes, sir. God bless you if you haven't been water baptized. Got plenty of water. <laughs> but the main thing is you see the picture and you put your faith and trust in what God has done for you. And that's why we have nothing to um, boast about, but everything to praise him for. Amen. For you are what you are by the grace of God. Hallelujah. And for those here today that have never trusted Christ as your personal Savior, I'm not just talking about coming forward, but you mean it in your heart. You know the Holy Spirit has dealt with your heart. Where's Rick? Oh, Rick's back. Rick, come on up. Our, our elder will be right here. Come up and talk to him about it, and he'll lead you to Christ. You know you, you, know you should. You, you just sense it all inside. Your heart is saying, go up there. And the devil will say, stay where you are under my control. But you break it by your will, and you come up, and you accept God's grace and mercy. 
For he offers that to everybody on this earth. So it's not God's will for no man to go to hell. God has offered the world grace and mercy through his son, Jesus Christ. But we all have a will and we have to decide either to go with Satan or go with God. Now it rests with you right now. This is your moment of truth. As our brother puts something up on the uh, music box, we'll be waiting for you. Our brother will wait for you. God bless you. You, I love you. Hope to see you again Wednesday night. Amen. God bless you now. Amen. Everyone stand to your feet.